Param pam 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 decided to uh, continue our sailing career here in Germany. Um, Germany has a lot of nice lakes to sail on. And we're going to need a dinghy for our forever boat. So this is going to be our dinghy and this is going to be our sailing while we're in Europe. Um, we are going to try to get back to the Tonic Sea in the spring to uh, see how we did with packing it up. We uh, put a shade tarp on it, and we put mothballs in it to keep things from living in it, and put a garboard fitting in the, in the bilge to keep it from filling up with water if it happens to get a rain leak or something. So in the spring, when we go back, we're gonna put it back in the water to sail for a little bit move it to a different boatyard that we originally wanted to go to but COVID, COVID world kind of prevented us from doing what we wanted to do back then. Um, but we should be able to move it to a different boatyard and save a little bit of money on storage. Um, so that ought to be interesting. In the meantime, we've been looking at boats on the internet to look for our forever boat. We have some ideas. Osti definitely has some ideas about what she wants. And they have a lot of good boats in Europe, um, especially ones made out of metal. France likes to build boats out of aluminum, and the Nether Netherlands likes to build boats out of steel. And either one's a lot cheaper over here in Europe than they would find them in the United States. So the plan is, plan A, is to find our forever boat here in Europe and then somehow get it back to America during our next PCS in about two years. So the search has started. We don't know if we're going to sail it across the Atlantic. If we do, we'll probably hire a crew that has more experience than us to help us with that or just get it shipped. But if we do that, we're going to have to have a boat that's ready to go. So it's going to have to be blue water ready because we're not going to have any time to get it together. you know. The other option is to buy a boat and ship it, um, and that still might be a good option because we won't have to pay, we can save the 19% VAT tax from buying a boat over here, so that's a huge, huge benefit. And the other option, plan B, is if we can't find the right boat for the right price at the right time, then we just go back to Baytoning Sea and we hang out on Baytoning Sea while we're looking for a forever boat. Cause after our next PCS, we'll have about almost two years left till, till the big escape starts. But it's all about planning for the great escape. So, but the Army, Germany, and COVID have all conspired to make sailing, make uh, saving for our sailing kitty pretty easy because it's easy to save money whenever. You can't do anything, you can't go anywhere. The big benefit to coming to Europe is traveling, but right now you can't travel because COVID restrictions. Um, a lot of things that we normally like to do here in Germany you can't do because everything's closed because they're going to another shutdown. So that's what we're doing. We're just saving money and planning for the future. So the reason the reason we built this boat um, is 
because here in Germany they have a lot of laws that govern everything. To go sailing on these lakes, um, especially the big one, there's a nice one called Bodensee or Lake Constance, about an hour and a half south of here that we really want to go sailing on because it borders three countries, um, Switzerland, Austria, and Germany. So we can hit three countries on a little sailboat on an alpine lake, which sounds like a really cool deal. However, Germany makes it difficult for foreigners to come here and go sailing because they require uh, what they call a Siegelschein, which is a sailing permit. Um, our sailing training in America doesn't count, so you have to take their German training and you have to take a test that's also in German. And just getting a boat licensed for uh, Bodensee is very difficult. But they do have a little loophole where you can sail a boat that has less than 12 square meters of sail or less than, I think, two horsepower motor without a license. So we built this boat. For one, it's probably the biggest boat I can build in this 12, 12 by 12 workshop. And it's big enough that we could probably go out and go uh, like dinghy camping. So we're hoping to like get it all put together and then go sail around boat and see and hit a couple countries and go camping in the meantime. And then we also need to learn how to sail our dinghy. So this dinghy, uh, I chose it because you can row it, you can put a little motor on the back of it, or you can sail it. And uh, it all packs up and nice and it's nice and lightweight. So when it's all done, it's supposed to weigh like 100 pounds. Mm -hmm. Mine should be even less because I cut the slats a little bit thinner. It's 10 feet long. <laughs> Which is probably going to be pretty big for a dinghy. It depends on what kind of boat we get. If our forever boat's over 40 feet, it'll be okay. But if we get a 35 foot forever boat, we might have to build a second one at like seven and a half foot long. But that just gives me more practice for the next one. But it's been challenging doing this boat right now because. Good wood isn't hard, isn't easy to come by in Germany. We're not near any ocean, so it's hard to find wood that is good for shipbuilding. Um, this, the plans called for oak and uh, redwood cedar for the hull, but oak is really expensive here. It comes out of France and they wrap it up in plastic like something you'd find like a sandwich in a sandwich shop and they draw they ask crazy prices for it and it, it looks like crap too. It's got knots and checks all through it. So oak wasn't going to work. Um, and then uh, redwood cedar obviously is western redwood cedar. It comes from the western United States um, and that's really hard to get over here without shipping it. And, it's not really what we want to do. So we use local wood, um, beech, and spruce. So after World War II, the black, the redwood, or the black forest got deforested to pay for reparations. And uh, in the meantime, they planted uh, spruce because it grew really fast. So they still had their their black forest. Um, so now this is the go-to wood for everything down around here: spruce. So that's what I decided to use for the hull. It's cheap and it's local. And then beach. Beach is also uh, locally grown. So beach and spruce is going to be our thing. So spruce is a little bit heavier than uh, redwood cedar, but I cut it thinner to make up for it. So it should work out. And I think beach is lighter than oak. So it all should work pretty good. And these are the plans. It's a gaff rig, um, but I'm thinking I'm, I might move this mast back a foot and make it into a sloop rig so that we can put a foresail on it. Or we can do it just like this and put a bowsprit out there and put a little foresail on there as well. Give us a little extra sail out of our area. This calls for 53 square foot sail, but I'd like to get it up to about 100 square feet with the main a main sail and a foresail. And my lovely wife will show you what progress we've made so far. 
Selamat tahun baru. Um, ya, sekarang memasuki tahun 2021 dan kalau mengingat uh, kalau kalian ingat um, video terakhir kami um, markir kapal kami by Toningsi di Georgia, lalu kami pindah ke Jerman. Itu uh, bulan Mei. Uh, kami pindah ke Jerman bulan Mei uh, tahun 2020. Dan tentunya di Jerman kami berpikir untuk bisa terus berlayar. Tapi ternyata tidak mudah. Di sini terlalu banyak peraturan. Uh, contohnya seperti ada SIM, ya, SIM berlayar. Yang mungkin itu uh, apa ya normal uh, di negara-negara uh, lain juga harus mempunyai uh, SIM untuk berlayar atau untuk uh, menyetir kapal dengan ukuran tertentu. Tetapi masalahnya adalah SIM kami yang kami dapatkan dari Amerika itu tidak berlaku di sini. Padahal SIM itu berlaku di Prancis, di Itali, di Yunani, itu berlaku. Jadi kalau kamu kami mau mendapatkan SIM berlayar di sini, kami harus mengikuti ujian di Jerman dalam bahasa Jerman. Yang tentu saja kami berdua tidak terlalu tidak mempunyai skill untuk itu um, jadi ya uh, itu sudah kendala akhirnya setelah mencari-cari informasi uh, kami menemukan bahwa kami bisa berlayar uh, dengan kapal kecil ya ukuran tertentu uh, kapal kecil dengan layar juga ukuran tertentu kalau tidak salah itu tidak melebihi 12 kaki persegi kalau tidak salah jadi akhirnya kami membuat sendiri uh, kapal ini yang prosesnya nanti akan uh, kami tunjukkan uh, sudah sejauh mana ini belum selesai ya uh, sekarang kira-kira sudah tiga mingguan kami mengerjakan ini um, ya jadi ini terbuat dari kayu sepenuhnya dan um, ini rencananya atau desainnya kami membeli desain ini dari internet ya um, untuk 10 kaki atau 3 meter kurang lebih um, dan ini bisa nanti bisa dipasangi uh, mesin atau motor kecil atau juga layar atau juga hanya uh, dayung dengan dayung biasa bisa uh, uh, kami bisa mengemudikan kapal ini um, sejauh ini kesulitannya adalah mencari bahan baku kayu Hmm, menurut saran dari desain adalah uh, kayu oak atau um, atau cedar cedar merah. Tetapi uh, keduanya itu tidak uh, alami di Jerman ya. Uh, mereka itu mengimpor kayu-kayu tersebut. Jadi di sini sudah mahal sekali harganya. Uh, belum lagi uh, susah mencari kualitas yang bagus. Jadi ya tidak inilah tidak seimbang ya, dengan harganya. Yang banyak adalah kayu beach itu namanya saya tidak tahu uh, dalam bahasa Indonesia mungkin tidak ada di Indonesia. Dan kayu spruce, kayu spruce ini uh, adalah kayu yang digunakan atau banyak digunakan di Jerman karena uh, itu yang mereka tanam untuk forestasi uh, di di Jerman. Jadi mungkin kalau di tempat lain itu pinus ya, yang banyak ditanam di sini adalah spruce. Hmm, ya, jadi kami menggunakan kayu spruce dan mencoba uh, membuat dingin dan um, oh ya untuk rencana berlayar uh, karena kami tinggal di Jerman Selatan uh, jauh dari laut yang ada adalah danau. Danau itu bernama Danau Konstanz atau Bodensee dalam bahasa Jerman. Danau itu berbatasan dengan tiga negara, jadi Jerman, Austria, dan Swiss. Jadi kalau kami mengarungi danau itu, kamu bisa pergi ke tiga negara. Itu target kami. Dan itu saja untuk saat ini, kita lihat nanti perkembangannya tentu saja kami akan terus memposting video-video bagaimana perkembangan kami menyelesaikan kapal ini atau perahu ini 